Hello, welcome to the second unit on prokaryotic cell biology. In this video, we're going to be talking about the bacterial cell envelope, with a particular focus on the structure of the cell wall and the differences between gram-positive cells and gram-negative cells. It's important to understand those differences because it's going to come into play later when we start talking about antibiotics and how can you treat bacterial infections. Okay, let's get started. The bacterial cell envelope consists of structures that are found outside of the bacterial cell membrane. So here we have a bacterial cell. This would be the plasma membrane. And the cell envelope are the support structures found outside of the membrane. The majority of bacteria will contain some type of cell wall. And then other bacteria outside of that also contain a protective layer called a capsule or an S layer. There are two main groups based on the cell wall composition, gram-positive cells and gram-negative cells. Besides those two main groups, there are also additional groups consisting of acid-fast bacteria and bacteria that don't contain a cell wall at all. Similar to plant cells, the function of the bacterial cell wall is to provide support and protection to the cell. It prevents the cell from bursting due to osmotic pressure when it's placed in a hypotonic environment. Remember from past classes that a hypotonic environment is one that has low solute concentration outside of the cell compared to inside of the cell. The fact that bacteria with the cell wall will expand but not lice is different than animal cells, which would burst if, they were, if too much water was to cross into the cell. While the majority of bacteria have a cell wall, there are a few species that do not. Those would undergo the same type of cell lysis that you would see in an animal cell. Thus, they must only live in isotonic environments in order to be able to survive. Besides protection, the cell wall is also what gives the species their shape. The central component to the bacterial cell wall is a structure called peptidoglycan. If you break down that term, we see the word peptido, or peptide, indicating there's a protein component of the molecule, and glycan, or sugar, indicating there's a carbohydrate component. Peptidoglycan is made up of repeating sugar units of N-acetylglucosamine, shown in the image in green circles, and N-acetylmuramic acid, shown in the image as blue circles. These long chains of repeating sugar units are then held together with cross-links of pentapeptides, or chains of five amino acids. The cross-linked peptidoglycan layer forms a sheet that wraps itself around the bacterial cell, providing protection for the cell membrane. There are two main classifications of cells based on the cell wall, gram-positive cells and gram-negative cells. They both contain peptidoglycan in their cell wall, but the overall structure of the cell wall is slightly different between the two. In gram-positive cell walls, one of the key characteristics is a thick layer of peptidoglycan with many layers typically ranging up to 12, which we can see here indicated in the blue in this image. Traveling through the structure are molecules called tachoic acid or lipotachoic acid. The difference between these is just based on whether they travel all the way through the cell wall to attach to the plasma membrane. You can see here for the lipotachoic acid, they are embedded in the fatty acid lipid bilayer, whereas the regular wall tachoic acid is not. These tachoic acids are negatively charged, and it is believed they provide structure and also help transport of positively charged molecules through the peptidoglycan layer. The space between the cell membrane and the peptidoglycan layer, shown here, is called the periplasm. In gram-positive cells, the space is very thin, though so thin that it wasn't even labeled on this image. Contrast the structure on the previous slide with the one seen here from a gram-negative cell. In these cells, the peptidoglycan network is very thin, with only one to three layers surrounding the plasma membrane, indicated here with the blue line. Instead of a thick layer of peptidoglycan, gram-negative cells instead have a second lipid layer called the outer membrane. This outer membrane is composed slightly differently than the cell's plasma membrane. The inner leaf is similar in composition and held close to the peptidoglycan layer through a protein called a murine lipoprotein, which can bind both the peptidoglycan 
and embed in the lipid membrane. The outer leaf of the lipid bilayer is made of a special protein called lipopolysaccharide. Lipopolysaccharides contain fatty acid tails of the membrane attached to a molecule called lipid A, which then has a large carbohydrate structure coming off the end of it. This large carbohydrate is made of a core set of monosaccharides followed by the O antigen monosaccharides. Interestingly, this molecule functions as an endotoxin because it is recognized by our immune system and can cause severe effects if it enters the bloodstream of humans. The thin peptidoglycan cell wall means that there is much more space between the peptidoglycan and the plasma membrane, resulting in a large periplasmic space here. In fact, in gram-negative cells, they can use this space as a separate compartment for various chemical reactions because molecules remain trapped between the inner and the outer membrane, almost like a membrane-bound organelle in eukaryotic cells. This doesn't exist in gram-positive cells because without the outer membrane, there's nothing to trap molecules. Anything secreted from a gram-positive cell will just diffuse away through the peptidoglycan and into the environment. This slide shows the comparison between the gram-positive cell wall and the gram-negative cell wall to help you with your studying. It is important to know what type of cell wall a species has because that can affect the way antibiotics function. For example, gram-positive species can be killed with penicillin, but gram-negative species cannot. The outer membrane of the gram-negative cell makes it harder to get molecules into the cell itself, which affects the effectiveness of the antibiotics. Interestingly, though, the thick layer of peptidoglycan makes gram-positive cells harder to destroy physically in the environment because of the thicker wall, so they are often more difficult to lyse by physical means. You cannot see the molecular detail of a cell wall just by looking under a microscope, so we need a way to determine what type of cell wall a bacterial species has. To do this, we use something called the gram stain. This is the most common stain used in microbiology and the only stain you need to know the details of for this class. The first step is to use crystal violet, a positive stain that will stain all of the cells purple. You then add iodine as a mordant, which just means that it helps the dye stick better to the cells. The third step is a wash with ethanol, and this is the key step. We call this the differential step because it will allow us to determine the difference between gram-negative and gram-positive cells, because during this step, something different will happen between the two of them. When you add alcohol to the cells, it will do two things. It will disrupt the outer membrane of gram-negative cells, and it will dehydrate the thick peptidoglycan layer of the gram-positive cells. When that layer gets dehydrated, the layers compress and trap the dye within them. Gram-negative cells only have a thin layer of peptidoglycan that's unable to trap the dye. Since the outer membrane is damaged, the dye gets washed away and the gram-negative cells lose their purple color. The final step is called a counter stain. This stain will then color the clear cells to make them a new color. The counter stain used for the gram stain is safranin, which is a light red in color. I recommend everyone to think of this as light red and not pink, because then it's easier to remember that gram-positive cells stain purple because they both begin with P, while gram-negative cells stain red. That mnemonic device doesn't work if you say they are pink. There are some species that have atypical or even no cell walls, but these are the minority of bacteria. One classification with medical importance are the acid-fast bacteria. These cells have a thick peptidoglycan cell wall, similar to gram-positive cells, seen here. However, on the outside, they have an outer layer of something called mycolic acids. These mycolic acids have long chains of fatty acid tails of up to 60 carbons, forming a very hydrophobic and protective layer on the surface. The most medically important acid-fast organism is Mycobacterium tuberculosis, the causative agent of TB. In fact, one way to diagnose TB is to collect a sputum sample and perform an acid-fast stain. This stain will dye the bacteria themselves red if they are acid-fast on a blue background of the eukaryotic cells from the sputum. Some bacteria have no cell wall at all. These have an undefined shape because remember, the cell wall is what gives structure, and they must live in an isotonic environment. 
To find an isotonic environment, most cell wall-less bacteria actually live inside the cytoplasm of other eukaryotic cells. We call these obligate intracellular organisms. The final part of the cell envelope is found external to the cell wall and only found in some species. The structure is gel-like and firmly attached to the cell wall, it is called a capsule, and it can be detected using a capsule stain. If it is loose and more amorphous, then it is considered a slime layer. These cannot be stained because they are destroyed in the staining process. A capsule is a layer of polysaccharide or glycoproteins that protects the cell from dehydration. They also provide a protective measure against phagocytosis from other cells. This is especially important for bacterial pathogens, as phagocytosis is one way your immune cells help destroy invading pathogens. That means that having a capsule can make some bacteria pathogenic. The capsule stain is different from the other stains in that it uses both positive and negative staining. The positive staining stains the bacteria themselves purple, while the negative staining is staining the background. The capsule itself does not pick up a stain, so you can see the clearings around the cells that indicate that these do form a capsule. This doesn't occur if you have a slime layer when you stain it because that layer is destroyed and so you don't get the clearings that you see with a capsule.